Deep, tucked away in a cozy town in Richmond, Virginia, lies one of the most talented men to show his masculine face on your living room TV set. He's a man's man, a modern day Casanova, a comedic genius not afraid to push the envelope of political toilet humor. And with his loyal sidekick Kevin, together the two of them would set the standard for public access television and late night entertainment. I think you guys are entertaining it. To, to tell you the truth, but in a, I'm not laughing with you, I'm more or less laughing at you. Today we have an interesting topic, because we're going to be taking a look at the legend and legacy of what some consider to be the worst public access TV show ever produced. The Gorgeous George Show. Public access TV is a weird creature. In the 1970s, an act was passed under Section 611 of the Communications Act that made it a requirement for cable providers to provide channels dedicated to the public where members of the community were able to produce TV shows which could be broadcasted to local channels. Public access was a great way to gain experience and learn the production process, but as far as money-wise, there wasn't really anything there. You don't always get paid for public access TV shows, it's more of a resource than anything. Luckily for us, we live in different times, and if you wanted to make content for others to see, it's vastly easier than it was back then. With more and more people becoming interested in YouTube and the idea of content creation in general, I feel like this is a great time to take a minute to talk about today's sponsor, Filmora 9. One of the most common questions people ask me in regards to video editing software, where do you start, what do you use, what program is best? Your first steps into the world of video editing can be fairly intimidating with a steep learning curve. Filmora 9 is free to try and designed to be the perfect stepping stone for beginners who want to dip their toes into video editing and try YouTube content creation. For real, out of all the high-end editing programs I've used, Filmora 9 is hands down the most beginner-friendly video editing software I've come across. With the detailed tutorials built right in that break down the functions, you'll have no problem learning the basics without getting overwhelmed. Something that tends to happen when you have no prior experience, believe me. Not only is Filmora 9 very easy to use, but it also doesn't lack in the quality department either. It has a ton of sound effects and music, and some really nice title and tile presets that are all customizable and simple to use. As far as video effects and animation, it has tons of unique and useful presets built right into the program itself that you can apply in just a few clicks and a drag. Two features that really stood out to me was the built-in transitions and the simple but effective split screen effect. To top it off, if you can't find exactly what you're looking for right off the bat, they have a website called Filmstock that has a lot of additional audio and video effects and some other video assets that are available right for download. I've used some of the effects in Filmora 9 for this video itself, and without a doubt, I will be adding the program to my personal library resources for future projects. If YouTube content creation or video editing is something you're interested in, I'd highly recommend giving Filmora 9 a try for free. I've included a link in the description or pinned comment for ease of access. So the Gorgeous George Show, you're probably asking yourself how this fits in with the channel, and I can understand that. How does some cheap low budget TV show from over a decade ago fit into a channel primarily focused around internet culture? Well, like all the best tales out there, this one has a few twists and turns that the unaware may not see coming. Because the Gorgeous George tale reaches far beyond the TV set in Richmond. Since the early 2000s, George has been waging a non-stop war with trolls and detractors from the internet and the Richmond area, resulting in numerous lull suits, threats of violence, and DEF CON 1 levels of rage. These people prey on weak people, okay? But I am not weak, okay? And you're thinking that by me doing something or responding that it's getting a reaction? No, you're not getting a reaction. I am stating the obvious. There is no reaction. You think you're getting a reaction about me responding. I do what I will. I do what I want to do. No, nobody tells me what to do. I do what I want to do. It's safe to say that even though George's story starts off different and unique, its current trajectory is more than familiar territory. From an early age, George was always interested in pursuing a career in entertainment. Being an entertainer in the center of attention was always something that really appealed to him. He says in a short self-written bio that after watching some low-budget political talk shows, he figured he could do it better himself. Humble beginnings. So George and his close friend Matt started filming in 1994. The Gorgeous George show consisted of short skits, terrible improv, and some not-so-hot political takes. It also had a lot of strange guests and some musical performances from George and local bands. GG is a man of many skills, but he wouldn't fully mature as an entertainer till he got his partner in crime, Kevin Lazar. Together, those two men would build the groundwork for the Gorgeous George legacy. One interesting thing to note, that even though Kevin is monumental to the story and George's longtime sidekick, he doesn't receive the same level of hate and animosity that George did and still does. 
Kevin himself isn't really entertaining. While nothing about this program was really entertaining, but I do have to say Kevin adds a certain element to the Gorge George show. He helps to lessen the blow of George's exaggerated obnoxious behavior. And most importantly, he didn't really take himself too seriously, unlike George, but it didn't help much because the show was still widely disliked in the Richmond area for various reasons that all seemed to stem from George himself. Some of the common complaints you'd see would be terrible quality, the lack of preparation, general unfunniness, and George's ever-growing narcissism and rage. What cuts? Start it up again. I, 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 need, I need you to start it up again. Raise it up, please. Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. I can't hear it in here. There's also a massive cringe component sprinkled in there. See, part of the persona George falls back on is to act like an overconfident, obnoxious ladies man with a little Ric Flair inspiration mixed in. The gig itself is pretty overused and feels really forced from time to time. Now, I've had a lot of support. Now, I've had, don't get me wrong, I've had a lot of people back me up. It's obvious. But to discredit the people trash out there that downgrade my show. They know who they are. And they know who they are, but then you know what? You know what? You, but what you, can they kiss? But do you know what? What can they kiss? You know what they can kiss. But you know what? what? They still watch my show. They're no, matter, no matter if they want to take me They're off. They're compelled to. If they want to take me off the airwaves, they still watch me. Because I am intriguing. I am gorgeous in every category. And I am what's causing this assembly tonight. And people just don't know how to take cockiness. People don't know how to take arrogancy. Yes, I'm cocky. Yes, I'm arrogant, but I've got every way to back it up. I've got every means and every every inch of my body can back up what I say. That's what it boils down to. That's pretty apparent. That's pretty apparent. That's obvious. I mean, you you know, some people you have to explain it to. But the average viewer out there who either loves you or hates you knows you know what you're talking about. Any more questions from me? Yes, there's um, a few people that would like to know whether um, you have problems with the censors, or did the censors give you a hard time with your show? Because I, your show isn't the run of the mill thing that you would see, like, say, at 8 or 9 o'clock at night. It has to be showed at odd hours. Ladies and gentlemen, this is not Friends. This is not the reruns of MASH. This is not Star Trek. Spock, come in, Spock. Scotty, beat me up. No. Okay, this is not science fiction. This is reality, baby. Woo! You know? It's just like Gorgeous George. Coming into your bed. Okay. We have it dis discard Faso. Faso is hogging up the bed. We push him aside. Gordon Shorts takes over, ladies. Woo! As usual. Takes the Kalamon in. Rub that body all so smooth. Like a ball skull of Gordon G. Liddy's as smooth as his skull. <laughs> and then we take the wax paper. You've been a bad girl. We wax you up. And we put a Gorgeous George tattoo on your buttocks. Well, if they've been a good girl, if they've been a good girl, we do the same thing. <laughs> Thank God there's not Woo! that problem out there. Woo! Like, I've sat through some dry videos and watched some shit that was hard to get through, but the Gorgeous George show is at the top of the list. There are some moments, most of which involve random female guests, that are so awkward that you think to yourself, it has to be designed this way. From flirting with pregnant women, to having erotic conversations on air that sound like they were written by a 13-year-old in heat, now, you told me that basically that you like the white stuff in my package. Yeah. This episode in particular was an hour straight of this. One whole hour. Well, 44 minutes. And yeah, I watched the whole goddamn thing. I wish there was a word for that gross feeling you get that's immediately followed by the sudden urge to shower, because that's how I felt like after watching this. Thankfully, not every guest was a complete loss. Every so often, George would spice things up with a guest that was at least mildly entertaining. Some of the more memorable ones were Grandmaster Dong and Gigi's personal friend Sue, both for completely different reasons, mind you. Grandmaster Dong was Gigi's personal karate instructor in the late 90s, early 2000s, but they eventually parted ways. But before he did, he taught Gigi the mystic arts. 
Legend has it that George's power level was so high, he obtained the level of black belt in a matter of weeks. Or he tried to steal one of Master Wong's belts. It's hard to tell, a lot of the early George lore has survived through just word of mouth. Because unfortunately, George's show wasn't really one of those ones that everyone stayed up to record. Sue, on the other hand, isn't memorable for her appearance per se, she's memorable more for her backstory. She was one of George's personal friends that he brought onto the show from time to time, and in the end it was almost like an inside joke used by the callers to entice a reaction out of George. The two of them dated casually and George wanted to have a serious relationship. Sue had a bit of a troubled past that he was willing to overlook, and he even bought her a diamond ring in efforts to court her, but it just wasn't meant to be because, well, she already had a boyfriend and she just ended up pawning the ring. You notice Gigi is one of those guys that likes fixer uppers, and definitely has a soft spot for bad girls. And like I said, a and you know, to touch upon these women out here. Like I said, the stripper. Hey baby, I told you the deal. I told you you can drop that, that stuff, make more money and hang it in with me. A stripper that works in these bars, I'm not gonna mention her name, because she's not worthy of that. But hey, I give you an opportunity. When opportunity knocks, you answer the door. You don't blow it off, you answer the door. And I gave you the opportunity of a lifetime, baby. You blew it off. Bad jokes and terrible guests on their own aren't enough to completely destroy a show. A good host who's self-aware could easily turn it around by making himself the blunt of the joke. Everyone likes laughing at a big meatball who doesn't really take himself seriously and who's just fumbling through life. And that's the first impression you get from Gigi, that he's just a big goof that's in on the joke. But in reality, it's quite the opposite. George is extremely defensive and completely stubborn. It's his way or nothing. This is George's idea of genuine entertainment and comedy, not satire. He's not playing a big awkward fake macho ladies man because he thinks that's entertaining. He's doing it because he wants people to view him like that. You know, it's the whole fake it till you make it, but it just doesn't hit its mark. Instead of being a goofy buffoon that people laugh at, the GG persona comes off as fake, forced, and at best the sleazy attempt to look like a big shot TV host. There's a short documentary already made on George in the show that was released in 2014 after he ended his run on public access TV. I'd recommend watching it if you're still interested. It's pretty boring and one-sided, but it gives you some insight into the juxtaposition that exists between how George views himself compared to how others may view him. We're going to briefly talk about the doc a little later on because it has a relevant origin story, but I'll link it if you want to see the whole thing. But be warned, it's dry, and conveniently it leaves out the most important aspect of the show itself the only saving grace in this whole situation. See, periodically on The Gorgeous George Show, George and Kevin would host a segment at the end, and this segment is what I like to refer to as the Gorgeous George Hotline. During the early years of the show, for about 20 minutes or so, the phone lines are open, and any viewer in Richmond with a landline and free time could call up live and give George their opinions or just a piece of their mind. Hello? Hello. Hey, how are you doing? I'm doing, how you doing? Hey, I uh, have a really quick question for you. I saw you at a concert the other day. I was like, I saw you eating this there. I was going to say hi to you and see what was up, but you were stuck in your fat face. Uh, uh, hey, George. Hi, is it Daniel Fruit? Great to have you back on the air. I want to ask you about George Bush. Yeah, it's really great to have you back on the air. Okay. And um, I see you haven't taken a bath since. All right, uh, Daniel Freer, you will not. Since with your mom. You will not, yeah, I, actually, I was, bathing, <laughs> I, was, I was bathing your mom, and uh, I was doing a uh, uh, bristle rub on her uh, area down there, and she said, Ooh! We've got a phone call. Ah, we got a phone call from Gretchen. Gretchen, line one, you're on the air. Talk to us. Fuck you, George. Okay, well, was that Gretchen or was that uh, some homosexual calling up here? I am a heterosexual. Heterosexual now, so I hate to burst your bubble. Brandon, line two, you're on the air. Talk his comments and questions for our show tonight. Okay, uh, okay, what's your comment or question? Because my hand's right on the, on the presser here. I'm not going to say anything rude. Oh, God. Hi, I'm Rick from Richmond. Okay. What's your Hi, first Rick. comment or question? Uh, well, mostly, I'm just really happy that you're back and that you're back on the air. And I think it's a great benefit to Richmond and television in general that you Thank return. You. And I think the media one should let you on all the time, you fat kid. <laughs> and compared to a thin pig, do you have a fat fetish? Obviously, <laughs> you like your women fat, don't you? Talk to us, Richard. You're fat. More often than not, this just ended in George frantically hanging up on the caller and then proceeding with a cringy homophobic rant about how his detractors were secretly in love with him. Something George falls back on even to this day. If you really think about it, when this was all taking place in the late 90s, early 2000s, this was in fact the first documented case of callers messing with someone who's live streaming, or the equivalent for that time, historic if you ask me. Eventually, as you can expect, 
The call-in segments quickly escalated and became the only entertaining aspect of the Gorge George show, and the only part people were interested in. And it was taken to the next level when the internet and web forums began to spring up. In early 2000s, callers from the Richmond area and students from universities would congregate in Yahoo chat rooms online and plan their raids for when George was live on air. Their objectives were simple, to trigger him. Did you know that? I want to talk to you on here. Shit bag. Okay, uh, line two, talk to you. You bag? Line two. Hey. Hey. I bet you guys like blood text. Okay, uh, I think that you take it up the mouth, basically, up the middle. Line one, talk to us. Hey, how you doing? I'm sorry about all these calls. These kids calling up, you know, via punks and stuff. Right. Uh, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about, you know, our, the idols you're talking about. Right. That's the issue with the Eric Clapton, because he's, he's not a fat guy. Why are you talking to me? Hey, you know, I'm just thinking about buying a ring for my girlfriend. Okay, well, what kind of ring are you going to buy? Well, the thing is, like, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, I'm going to buy a ring for my girlfriend. Okay, what kind of ring are you going to buy? Well, that's not the problem. I was worried that she'd hock it for Matt. Okay. You know... Hock it for what? Hock it for what? Right. Okay. Right. Uh, well, you know, obviously, that's an inside deal, you, uh, whatever the, the deal is. We miss you, Judge. Yeah, a lot more. Talk to us. Go! Go! <laughs> Some of the go-tos were simple insults to brigading his phone lines with toilet flushes. Pranking and trolling George slowly was becoming a hobby or pastime for a select few Richmond citizens. But those citizens... They wanted to share what they helped create with the world. But since the internet was a brand new way to share media, fate intervened. And it was in the form of a man. A simple man. A man named Sean. Sean had recorded tons of call-in segments from past shows and decided to take upon himself to create montages and prank calls for others to partake in the enjoyment. So he uploaded them online. Now we also want to talk about something of another world. We're going to get right into it because this is what I want to talk about. Uh, once again, we live in a society where people probably don't have them, uh, I mean, probably have too much time on their hands. Okay. I mean, and uh, before we touch upon this, yeah. recently it was brought to my attention. What camera am I looking at? This one or this one? This one. I'm looking at this one right here. Yeah. Right. Recently it was brought to my attention that, uh, that basically that someone has taken our show mm -hmm. <laughs> and suck it on the internet. Now, I, I, now I, which is which is great, which is which is great. But, but there's a big U B U T here. Mommy, of all, of all people, thank you. See, I'm looking at this one. My mechanic, of all people, had told me this. <laughs> of all people, there were some of hey, George, by the way, is your show still going on? Yeah. Yes. Well, you, you saw the advertisements. Yes. Well, I, well, I was on the internet and I saw you on the internet. <laughs> now, this is all fine and dandy, but I didn't know anything. I had, I had no clue about what was going on here. Someone has taken our show and put snippets on, our, on, the, on the internet of our show only yeah. on the negative callers that call up in the show. Nothing about the skits, nothing about the, the entertainment of the show, but it's taken our show, snippet the, only the bad parts in the past of callers trying to cuss me out mm -hmm. and callers coming and calling the show. And now, there might not be a thing that, that obviously that can be done about it, but that's kind of you're kind of fringing on someone else's personal deal here uh, on property and, and of course yeah. it could be a potential lawsuit yeah and um, there's a possible ways of finding out who this bastard is and you know it's not you know you, you would think that if anything else it would be great to have someone pumping up the volume and pumping this up maybe even a personal agent but yeah. this bastard whoever these people are are just down and put it on the internet and, and if I you know it might not be tomorrow it might not be next week. But when I catch you, bastard, when I catch you, bastard, it's, it's all I And a lawsuit. This, although insignificant at the time, was the signaling of a shift in the world of Gorgeous George. A drastic change with everlasting effects. See, Sean and a few others in the Richmond area were also users of the Something Awful website and forum. They were part of the first iteration of Goons, and they saw massive potential for lulls in making George freak out. George himself actually became quite of an internet star in the early days. The Gorgeous George Show Sucks montages were shared on numerous websites and eventually uploaded to YouTube where they would receive hundreds of thousands of views. There were massive threads about him on Something Awful where he quickly became a goon favorite. They would post about him and make fun of his show, dig him information, engage him in flame wars. Sometimes people who actually knew George in real life would chime in and tell tales of real life interactions with him or elaborate on different aspects of his life, the latter having the strongest reaction. Okay, and I know who you are, you punk. They fired your ass at Starbucks <laughs> which because is, you were incompetent. Which is probably the lowest thing you could have. It's almost like being, it's almost like being fired from. It's almost like flunking nursery. God was a manager. At, <laughs> the guy was a manager at Starbucks yeah. and made a comment about me harassing two of the women inside of the establishment. Well, yes, there were, in the span of five years, there were two women that I found attractive, 
and I'm, on, I'm still talking to one of them who was an assistant manager with the company and another manager there, and I gave them flowers. Oh, I'm stalking them and they would hide in the back. You're Punk, a nice man. Punk, I know who you are, okay? And you dealt with the same insurance company that I dealt with, who is also an advertiser on the show. So I know exactly who you are. The company fired your ass because you were incompetent and you screwed up the, the payrolls in that in Starbucks. So that is something, <laughs> Joe, I'm on a roll, baby. Joe, I'm on a freaking roll here. I'm having, you know, so you know what? No off button you know, on this you, show. Know, you know what? You're a pathetic loser. You, you said you were a Navy brat or an Army brat. You are a pathetic loser, okay? I'm your freaking eye candy and you're yanking your sausage to me right now. Why don't you go on the internet and I can't find a girlfriend.com and you might get somewhere with your sorry ass self there. Let me because, tell you. You, because to me, you are a pissant, and for you to put up a different stuff about me saying that I had, I had a, a stalking charges on me, I have never had stalking charges on me. They fired your butt at Starbucks. You were a manager and they fired your butt at Starbucks. I know exactly who you are. You, I know exactly who you are, and I like to pop you in the face. If I saw you in, Dar in, in broad daylight, I would pop you in the face. Yeah. George is not the type of person to back down. You gotta give him that. He fights back. And he did in any way he could. See, George suffers from that unique effect where his response to the trolling is the real comedic aspect. Sure, the montages and threads are funny, but George's over-the-top reactions was what was keeping people coming back. And his propensity to engage with anyone trying to get a response out of him has led to him being one of the longest-running jokes on the internet. From posting threats of violence to trying to set up fights with random people online, he's stubborn and he was in it for the long haul. For years, this was his life. Gorgeous George show by day, online flame wars by night. All right, we're going to get into the topic tonight, and I'm going to just put this to bed once and for all. All you internet geeks out there, listen to me and listen to me good. I viewed all 22 pages of that crap that you all put on the internet about me. 22 solid pages of yours truly, your eye candy, whacking your sausage to every little thing <laughs> that I say. You don't usually talk and give the spotlight to the enemy. Yeah. You don't give the spotlight to the enemy whatsoever, but you got my attention and you got my attention in spades. And in almost every similar case involving internet trolling, things escalated and took another change in 2010. George was bouncing his show between public access and local radio stations, and he was entertaining the idea of completely retiring. It seemed the end was near, but in a surprising turn of events, instead of fading off into obscurity, George flipped the script. March of that year, he actually tried to sue multiple goons from the Something Awful website, along with YouTube itself. He had enough of people digging up information about him and re-uploading his clips. He also wanted YouTube and Google to be held responsible for not taking his action against people re-uploading his content. As you can imagine, the case was quickly thrown out, and just caused more people to laugh and poke fun at him to entice a reaction. You could even say that this was just throwing gas on the fire, because this really did just make things worse for him and his detractors, and it would only be a few months till they struck again. In December that same year, George was doing a Christmas show on 1450 WCLM breaking the airwaves and radio and we're doing the christmas show on radio and i've got something to say for all my fans out there Twas the night before christmas and all through a house through the house not a puss was stirring not the one even under your blouse everything was hung in care the stockings and the pantyhose were hung in care that soon that gorgeous george would soon come there and every sister sister wants to see how many inches that gg will stick it in them and dozens of goons flooded the radio station with complaints about George's singing and use of vulgar language. I believe he lost this battle and was banned from the radio station for it, but the war was not over. After this, George started a trend of trying to use the courts to settle his online feuds. It's gotten so bad that at this point he's on the verge of being labeled a fictitious litigant. Gorgeous George lawsuits. Man, I could make a whole video dedicated to just how ridiculous they are on their own. But it wouldn't be very entertaining because they all end the same way, with George getting laughed out of court. But for the ease of understanding, I'll give you some highlights of the Gorgeous George lawsuit saga. 
His first foray into the courts saw him try to sue four posters from something awful. That was thrown out. Less than two years later, he was back in the courts, this time suing a total of 11 shit posters. One of them being the great Gordon Freeman. Yes, the dude from Half-Life. He also tried to register his show in the Library of Congress, but when he was filling out the paperwork, he ended up doxing himself and he made the mistake of only registering his show for the year of 2012. It seemed like this was a calculated move by him to give him some more leverage against the goons re-uploading his content in the future, which he quickly put to the test by launching another lawsuit six months after that, this time against Sean and two other people for a civil rights violation. Again, this one didn't take hold and the judge declared that his complaint was too vague. Around this time, the documentary I mentioned earlier was being completed and released in early 2014. The documentary itself has an interesting backstory. It was produced by Brandon Hartsey and Kenny Johnson, and if I'm not mistaken, was originally planned to be a troll documentary or a mockumentary designed to make fun of George. Kind of like that highly underrated Jason Genova doc, Pumping Piss, same idea. But unfortunately, Gorge George is a little too smart for that and he refused to participate in the filming unless he was put in creative control of the project. And one thing he wanted to exclude from the documentary was any and all mention of the prank calls and trolling. Hence why I said the documentary is very one-sided. You can't tell the Gorge George story without including that. It's the reason why he became infamous on the internet in the first place. Sean, George's arch enemy, did a commentary video on the documentary after it was released. And once again, to no one's surprise, George tried to sue him for copyright infringement. This lawsuit went on for a little over a year because George kept on appealing the judge's decisions and it got to the point where it was pretty apparent he was just wasting everyone's time. By this time in the gorgeous George tale, his show was basically taking the backseat to his online antics and personal feuds. YouTube, you're a bunch of hypocrites. YouTube, you're dropping the ball with this, which you're gonna see things my way because I'm gonna make sure of that. That's all I'm gonna say about this. This son of a bitch takes my videos and critiques me all the damn time. This ain't gonna take long. I'm gonna critique one of the, this son of a bitch's video right now. And I'm going to give this son of a bitch a dose of his own freaking medicine. And I'm gonna commentate on this son of a bitch and his raging homo tendencies. Let's get to it. All right, right here, you see what I'm talking about. You see this flamer, you see his mouth is wide freaking open. He's ready to suck a mean dick. All right, ready to suck a mean dick. You can see that right now, totally obsessed. We're gonna give you a dose of your own freaking medicine and we're gonna do it right now. Uh, yeah, I think it's about time. Since YouTube doesn't honor privacy, and some, it's YouTube doesn't honor privacy, privacy control or privacy issues, Let's give this son of a bitch a dose of his own medicine right here. The dynamic with his detractors has also shifted. There aren't as many people following his story as there once was. Mention of him on the SA forums was being discouraged, and a lot of people eventually kind of moved on. The ones that didn't became the real focus of George's rage, and it shifted away from George waging war on the whole internet to a personal vendetta he developed against a select few detractors. Sean being in the most prominent group during the time, and more recently a man named Marty McFly who seems to have George's attention nowadays. But before that, George would try his luck one more time in the court systems. Near the end of 2016, he once again tried to sue Sean and another detractor and YouTube for copyright infringement and harassment once again. This situation is going on where back in 2000, like September the 12th of 2016, yours truly had a lawsuit against two individuals and YouTube, well actually Google and also deal with this situation for over about over a year and the same judge you know doing for kind of copyright infringement and doing the you old know, dealing with um definitely well actually it was harassment and so we went ahead and we you know amended the tort and it became defamation slander and libelous well everything has been laid out these two uh idiots that uh, which we will be nameless uh, have used this, uh, used me as a lightning rod, have used my coattails to think that they're going to become something out of the situation when they're a bunch of mentally ill, disturbed people. And now it's gotten to be where the judge threw out the defamation. Has not, hasn't thrown out the whole case, but it's thrown out the defamation. And this judge, this federal judge, which will be, will, will be nameless, remain nameless as far as I'm concerned, obviously is biased. 
During this process, one of the people he was suing flipped the script on him and wrote a mission to dismiss his case, citing that George was a fictitious litigant. This suit lasted all the way to summer of 2018, until George finally gave up on pursuing it and ultimately just blamed it on the judge. After that last attempt at suing his haters into oblivion, George took a little bit of a hiatus from the spotlight, which has been more common in the later years. Once again, it seemed George was on the verge of fading into obscurity, but in a semi-hilarious prank, his detractors found another way to drag George out of hiding. They posted a fake obituary knowing he would stumble upon it and immediately lose his mind, which he did. <laughs> it will never end. This saga, this... Uh, bullshit, this fucking joke, I mean, this will never end, this will continue. Whether I'm on the internet, whether I'm not on the internet, whether I'm taking a sabbatical, whether I'm pretty much in Antarctica, or whether I'm in uh, Madrid, this shit is going to still continue. Whether I'm doing a show, whether I'm not doing a show, how desperate can you be, you f to go ahead and bring me out, knowing that this would bring me out, how pathetic are you? How pathetic can you be? So I have to address something real quick as we near the conclusion of this video. I know it goes without being said, and I sound kind of like a broken record when I say this shit, but if this is your first time hearing about George, don't seek him out and jump into the whole trolling train. He's somewhat still active even to this day. I know it may be tempting, but George is too happy beyond belief. It's one of those situations where it's just it's best laughed at from a distance. It's not really safe to engage. You don't want to get dragged into a frivolous lawsuit, which is something George is known for. If George sees this video, he's probably going to declare it as a declaration of war, which is not what it's intended to be at all. As much as George will seethe hearing this, he's part of internet history, and I'm just here trying to tell the man's story because I find it interesting. You, you have to admit, he's entertaining when he's all riled up. It's a shame he wasn't able to harness and use that for his advantage, but that just wasn't in the cards for good old George. The urge to respond is too strong for him, and the goons take full advantage of that. At the end of 2019, one of them started showing up at the library George used for recording just to see him freak out. Get my goddamn face, you son of a bitch. Sir? Get the f*** out of here. Sir, are you okay? Get the f*** out of here. Sir, I fear for my safety right now. Are you alright, sir? Are you having a diabetic shock? I'll show you what a shock is in one second. Woo! Oh, even the security guards cracking a smile. This brings to light the main issue with George and any other person that may be in a similar situation to him. Sure, there's people messing with him, but he's kind of also bringing it on himself and making it worse. His interactions with the goons make it painfully clear. Even back in the old days, when the original Gorgeous George Sucks montages were uploaded, all Sean was doing was really poking fun at him. There never really seemed to be any malicious intent on their end for the most part. Sure, there's always bound to be people that take things to the extreme, but from what I've seen of George, it's a two-way street and he has no problem getting dirty in the trolling trenches just like anyone else. Part of me even thinks he enjoys this back and forth with them in some deep twisted way because he knows the dynamic. He knows that responding isn't the best thing to do, but for whatever reason he can't help himself. More recently, just a few months ago one of the goons took a more creative approach to trolling George and paid for a Chris Hansen cameo to get under his skin. In total predictable fashion, it didn't take George long to crawl out of hiding and throw some more threats around. All right, I'm going to address something right now, and this is going to be said. Desperation is what it is. These people are so desperate. They're self-loathing son of a bitches. They really have too much time on their hands and not enough brain. Certain somebody wants to get sued again. Well, you got my attention this time. Certain somebody doesn't know when to shut his mouth. You will get sued. Now, we got a problem here. We've got a disconnect. Chris Hansen, and I guess I'm not talking about the Hansen brothers with a mmm bop song. I'm talking about Chris Hansen. A class A celebrity. You're a class A celebrity. You had your own show or whatnot. Well, they fired your ass on NBC. They fired your ass on NBC. You also are a, an adulteress. You're an adulteress. You cheated on your wife. And you did some time in the penitentiary. Penitentiary. 
in jail. He did some jail time, okay? And back earlier this past year in 2019 for bad checks, okay? Bad checks to the tune of $13,000 or maybe I misread. I, I believe it was more than that. But you wrote some bad checks to found to to found um to find your um your scams that you're pulling off or whatever let me let you know and give you a clue okay you obviously aren't so bright you're obviously desperate because you're going to take scraps from people that are criminals you obviously hang around criminals such as your buddy wm who is a criminal and that makes you obviously a criminal because you've done some time in the jail for um writing bad checks back in January 2019. So your credibility, sir, about me lacks big time. Now you've opened up Pandora's box and now you've opened up a door you don't want to open, but the damage is done. Chris Hansen, I'm going to show you what it's like to catch a predator because guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to catch you and I'm going to catch you with a civil lawsuit, you son of a bitch. This has been a trend for nearly 20 years now, from literally printing out pictures of Sean to bring on a show and beat up, to uploading videos with loosely veiled threats and filing pointless lawsuits as a form of retaliation, George has without a doubt thrown some gas on his own fire. And because of how stubborn he is, it doesn't seem like this is going to change anytime soon. Boo! Boo! Magnificent. Yes. Boo! Wonderful. Boo! Specimen. Who let the dogs out? Woo! Woo! Oh, God! The dog! Woo! My cactus. Woo! 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 Woo!